Hello everyone, I'm RecB5. And I am Sandman99. And welcome back to Skyrim Special Edition with Winter Frost. Yes. I almost said Fallout there. <laughs> <laughs> We've been and, doing so much Fallout. Yeah. And in the last episode, we went all the way to Eustengraf, only to, to, to recover the uh, Horn of Jurgen Windcaller, only to discover that we went there for nothing. Mm -hmm. because, because somehow somebody, somebody got, got there ahead of us and breezed through all the defenses while leaving everything in place and untouched. Yeah, somebody who's apparently a tavern maid. Yeah, or tavern owner, I guess. You're that visitor been poking around. So here we are. I'm the innkeeper. And I want to rent the attic room. Attic room, eh? Well, we don't have an attic room, but you can have the one on the left. Yeah, okay. Make yourself at home. I'll make myself at home. Sorry. But I'm terribly we busy. don't get a lot of travelers here in Riverwood. Everybody's, Everybody's so damn chatty. chatty. Yep. Yeah, we don't get a lot of travelers here in Riverwood, but you just about can't walk through the damn tavern because it's standing room only, right? Yep. <clears throat> okay. So you're the dragonborn. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Serana? I think you're looking for this. Okay, well, now I've got the horn. We need to talk. Follow me. Okay. I get out of the I way, could. Serana. I would if I could get around Serana. <laughs> oh, that would hurt. Getting your landing your ass on the fucking sharp edge of that chest. Okay, Delphine. Is Lydia in the way? And then okay. sm smashing your face on the fucking dresser to boot? Do I need to give you a, a little bit of a helping hand along too, or not? Just give everybody a shove. See, Delphine's another one of those uh, female NPCs that walks like a watermelon salesman. <laughs> like, come on, most guys, guys don't, don't even walk like that. Yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> if they do, people make fun of them. Yeah, because they're watermelon them, and, salesmen. And call them watermelon salesmen. Exactly. Oh, right, I gotta close the door here. Yeah. Okay. The Greybeards seem to think you're the Dragonborn. I hope they're right. Okay, so you're the one that took right. the horn? I guess I'm getting pretty good at my harmless innkeeper act. Except for the way you walk. I was expecting it's someone good. taller. The whole point of being in hiding is to appear to be someone you're not. <laughs> okay, so what do you want? I didn't go to all this trouble on a whim. I needed to make sure it wasn't she wants me to join her cult I am not to hunt dragons. dragons. I yep. already gave you the horn. I'm actually trying to help you. I just need you to hear me out. Okay, well, I'm listening. Like I said in my note, I've heard that you might be dragonborn. I'm part of a group that's been looking for you. Well, someone like you for a very long time. If you really are dragonborn, that is. Before I tell you any more, I need to make sure I can trust you. Okay. Why are you looking for a dragonborn? Don't, that the dragonborn is the ultimate dragon slayer. You're the only one that can kill a dragon permanently by devouring its soul. Can you do it? Can you devour a dragon's soul? You betcha. Yeah. We'll have a there can be only one. <laughs> God. <laughs> Okay. That so was a good TV show. What's the part you're not telling me? Yeah, the movies were pretty good too, but boy, oh boy, the timelines got confusing after a while. Because in the movies, which were supposed to be canon, after uh, Christopher Lambert killed the last of the other immortals, then he was the only one. But then uh, this TV show pops up. Okay, well... I know they are. And uh, then the, all of a sudden there's immortals all over the place again, right? Like a new one every week. And then that TV show even had a spin-off that lasted one season that was actually wasn't bad either. Called The Raven. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it was one of the uh, characters that played a, a, uh, a guest, I guess, in... Uh... All right, 
kind in uh, the There's regular TV series, a, you know, made a we couple of appearances a, as a guest, and, we'll or was a recurring character or something. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's, Let's go, go kill us a dragon. Here. Actually, you know what? I'm scared of dragons. I have a character that's very similar in appearance to this one that I've been playing, you know, like as a side kind of thing. Yeah, yep. That's better. And, uh, you know what? Dragons are scary. Okay. Hey, I'm trying to, I'm trying to open this chest. Get out of the way. Okay. We'll take that. We'll take that, that there. And, uh, you know what? Dragons, uh, because I've got them set to expert difficulty in the deadly dragons mod. Yep. They do like plus 75%, uh, magic damage and, uh, uh, they have 20% magic resistance and that kind of stuff as well. So, uh, you know, like dragons now, in addition to being able to dish out extremely damaging uh, attacks, are actually, uh, you know, like pretty heavily armored and pretty uh, tough to kill too. Okay, I'm overloaded here. I gotta hand something off to somebody or put something down or both. Well, you do have yes. someone who just so happens to be sworn to carry your burdens right there. Yeah, you know what? You can carry some of my burdens. I'm here if you need me, Thane. Yeah. As you command, my Thane, it would be my pleasure. Yeah, I still miss that line. <laughs> The, the subtitle still says it. Yeah, yeah the, the subtitles. subtitles. It's just not the same, though. Okay, well, I'm going to give her this blade, blade sword. See, maybe I should just go in and post and, like, edit that line in there. <laughs> <laughs> and what else? I'm going to give you this silver hunting bow as well. It'll give me a little bit of room until I can get to the cloud chest and un offload some of this stuff. Right? There. Let's get going, then. Okay. Oh, it looks like I need to recharge my bow again, too. Yeah, you actually uh, fully ran out on your bow a while back. Yeah. There you go. Well, you know what? Eventually, you collect so many uh, soul gems in this game that you end up with, like, a hundred soul gems in your inventory unless you have something to spend them on, right? So that's why I don't feel too bad about using magical items like magical weapons that have to be recharged often. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you have to have something to be able to use up the soul gems anyway. Yep. Yeah, I'm totally not traveling with you, by the way. So uh, away you go. Oh, you're going to find your own way? Yeah, because you know what? It's maddening following her. Because she does that half trot for one thing, and for another thing, for some reason, just she just randomly will turn and run in a in a random direction for no apparent reason. Okay. Oh. And drawing all the enemies she can while she runs about. Yeah, exactly. She picks fights with everything, right? Oh yeah, I got my tent. Yeah. Okay, Lydia, you can give me back some of that stuff now. You, my As you command, my You're going to pitch your tent and throw some of your shit in there? Uh, yep. But I'm going to take back this. And, uh, you know what? Maybe I should take back this too, since she's not going to use it anyway, by the looks of it. I'll take back that. And she can keep the grenade. Ajit bow, and I'll take back this because I can sell some of that stuff too, right? So, what do we got here? Nothing more to break down. However, uh, business hours should be starting at the stores here any moment, so. Okay, well, I'll throw that in there. What else? Okay. Firewood, got to keep that. You see all the the soul gems I've got already, right? You know, like I've got a lot of them. 
Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the way I look at it is might as well uh, make use of the extra punch that the magical enchantments give your weapons. I'm almost starting enough. I've got, almost got enough of this now to make this worthwhile doing. Maybe we'll do this again here in a little while. Yeah, holy crap, do you have a lot of alchemy crap. Yep. But we'll uh, we'll continue to store it for the time being. Maybe I'll just do a whole whack of alchemy off camera. Because I don't think we really urgently need anything right now. I've got quite a few uh, healing, healing potions, potions and, stuff. and magic potions. And I'm already fairly weighted down by all that stuff, so... Uh, Imagine if uh, there was a particular area of this game that had a 100 pound weight limit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was that was terrible. We haven't posted that yet. It's po I think we're going to post that today. Yeah, we'll be posting it before we but, post this. But started the Honest Hearts uh, um, DLC. DLC. For New Vegas. For New Vegas. And uh, yeah, it's like, well, you can only take 100 pounds of gear. And I'm carrying like 367 pounds of gear, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> it's like, well, what am I going to keep and what am I going to get rid of? Like, what am I going to do? <laughs> God. Yeah, it was terrible. It was very traumatic. Okay, we'll save all those bolts in case I decide to switch to a crossbow someday. We'll just keep collecting those. And then I guess we'll sell a couple of things. I've already got that Dwarven Dagger of Freezing, which does just about as much damage as this Glass War Axe of Shock does anyway, so. Really, that's uh, like 46, including the Shock damage. That is 42, including the Freezing damage, so. I think I'll sell the Axe and... If you need anything, say the word. Well, you're not exactly going axes in this playthrough anyways. I might later, though, because uh, the uh, Urk Tree for axes... Oh, so I guess it's not opening time just yet. The Perk Tree for axes has actually got some, some good uh, perks in there, right? Like the ability to uh, inflict bleed damage and that kind of thing. Yep. <clears throat> well, it looks like these guys are open, so maybe I'll sell my excess stuff to Lucian Valerius here. Lucan Valerius. Some may call this junk. Me, I call them treasure. Nonsense Imperial names. Yep. Whatever. Okay, so uh, what do we got here? We got oh yeah. Our glass war axe of docks. Sell that. And I think we also have a silvered hunting bow here. We'll sell that too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we got any excess? Okay, we can sell this. Okay, looks like we can sell those too. Like those potions that give you a temporary boost of 20 points of health or whatever. I've never really, uh, you know, bothered with those very much because 20 points of health is a fairly insignificant boost, right? Yep. Yeah, I never used them much either. I never used them and I never used the regeneration potions. But I'll tell you what I do do is I carry every bottle of liquor in Skyrim in my inventory. <laughs> yeah. Oop, he hasn't got any money left. Okay. I got any more stuff here that I really need to sell? Yeah, I got a fair amount of stuff. But he just can't buy it from you. Well, let's see what we can get here. Ring of Mending. Okay, that looks like a good thing to, to learn, right? Uh, let's see here. Oh, he's got a Grand Soul Gem. We'll, we'll pick that up. Because I think the Ring of Mending is way more money than what I'll be able to re recover from uh, selling some of this stuff back. Potions of Destruction. Yeah. Okay. 
because it's surprising how much uh, this stuff can add up. All right, like even the, the small potions that I've sold have added up to like 800 gold, right? Yep. And I don't have to take all of his money if I don't have enough to do everything, but... You could also just sell him some poisons, though. Or a could. scroll. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess I could take a bath on the extra, you know, like uh, 15 gold difference here, right? Does he have something worth 15 gold to buy? Maybe some ingots or something? Mm. I don't know. I think that the 15 gold is not really that important anyway. <sighs> so... Okay, well, that doesn't really sound like it's very useful to me, so fine. There. He cleaned out his money. I knew you'd come for me. I am your sword and your shield. Yeah, uh... Uh, yeah, I finished that. Okay. Well, it's now getting to be 8 a.m. I think we're going to go and find some place to put up the camp so we can sleep the day away. Because hmm. we wouldn't want to get caught by uh, vampire hunters or dragons or something out in the open during the daytime. Okay. See, by now, by the time I wake up here, well, Delphine will be long gone anyway, right? Yeah, she'll probably be standing there and be like, what the fuck? And then you show up in the middle of the night? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm hungry. Okay, well, I guess let's see if we've got a... Okay, I guess we'll have to harvest a few more uh, stale blood potions. I save the normal blood potions and use them kind of like healing potions in a pinch. Yep. That's why I don't use those for food, right? <clears throat> okay. It's so bright out here. I don't know. Okay. Well, it's after 7 p.m., so we can be on our way. It's safe to be out. Oh, I was tripping over a chicken there. <clears throat> Why have I got more than, uh, oh, okay. We can turn that one off for the time being. And just like that, it's getting colder. Yep. I wonder if the seasons in the game have an effect on the survival mode. I don't even know what these month names signify like I have no idea whether it's fall or spring or summer right now I haven't got a clue this is something to look up <laughs> <laughs> you know like for me they, they might, might as well, well have used January February March and so on because I have no idea what their uh, month names mean right I would have to be uh, far more detail-oriented and uh, fanatical about it than I am in order to even remember this. Okay, it is September in game right now. Oh, okay. So it's sort of like early fall? Yep. I mean, not that you can really tell the difference because it pretty much looks the same out here all the time anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, I guess their months even have differing number of days in them yep. compared to our calendar. Oh. Well, I mean, the fact that they have two moons, I yes. guess, uh, you know, really could have something to do with it too, right? Although, actually, it looks like they adopted uh, Gregorian calendar days uh, after Morrowind or, or, or after Daggerfall. So, like... 
In 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 Arena and Daggerfall, every month was thirty days long. Uh oh, something's, something's going on here. Maybe I should do a quick save just in case it crashes here again, right? Because this looks like that mega pack of wolves again. Oh yeah. You're just coming at him from the other side. Yeah. That'll teach you. It looks like that's it. That's all of them. Oh, look at that. Well, she did. Yeah. Thought she could kill the mega pack of bulls with the iron dagger. I guess so. That was a big mistake. Okay, well, there's nobody around. <laughs> She's food now. Yeah, I wonder now if it's that I've, uh, like, harvested her blood. I wonder if I can do this and it'll still work. Let's see. Yep. There. Problem solved. <clears throat> yeah, we can't have all of our NPCs in the world being killed, right? But uh, you might have noticed that I, uh, you know, looted her body first before I brought her back, right? Yep. Yeah, just so you could take all of her shit. Yeah. Well, all the stuff that was worth taking anyway. Now that's interesting. They don't implement the leap year in any of these games. No? Nope. Hmm. So the months then, the days that the, are in the months, do they correspond to one another? Or? So it looks like... Look at this, another mega pack of wolves here. Oh no, I think this was the pack that crashed your game last time. Oh. Okay, well, maybe we'll do another quick save here, just in case. Yeah, it looks like uh, in, in early games, Arena and Daggerfall, they uh, did uh, 30 days every month, and then they adopted Gregorian calendar number of days in later games, except they never implemented things like leap days. Oh. Or leap years. Okay. Other than that, they're just the same months, just with fancy... Elder Scrolls names, I guess. Well, it's not like it makes a huge difference since is how uh, uh, the weather is always the same anyway. You know, like I can't tell the difference between winter and summer in this place because it's more tied to where you are on the map as to what the weather's like as opposed to the time of year, right? Because here... In uh, the equivalent of February, it looks the same as it does in July, right? Yep. <clears throat> okay, well, it looks like we have managed to uh, successfully navigate this cell from the other direction. So it's kind of what I thought, right? Every now and then you get a bad spot for some reason, and uh, if you approach it from the opposite direction after traveling, fast traveling past it, well then it uh, you know, kind of works out in the end, right? Yep, I can't find any mention of the weather changing with seasons at all. Yeah, I don't think it does. It was just a thing I was thinking about because of the survival mode, right? Yeah. I would imagine that something like that would probably be horribly complicated to try and implement, right? Ah, who knows? It depends on how it was initially implemented. Yeah. If you could do it entirely programmatically, then it would be easy.
there. Vampire Seduction is really, really good. At least in the in the, with the mod, Vamp like vanilla Vampire Seduction actually sucks because it doesn't affect uh, NPCs higher than like a certain level. Like there's a level cap to it. Uh -huh. Whereas here, I think so long as the uh, NPCs are not too much higher level than you, then it always works, right? Yeah, and the thing is, too, is I think guards are always higher level than you, so... Yeah. Oh, okay. I guess I'd passed by here before. So anyway, I've been learning some things by, um, you know, like just doing the, uh, my own playthrough with a, a similar character to this one. Oh, yeah. And I need to do some little bit different things with this character's build than the direction that I've been going. You figure so? Yeah, because, uh, the fact is that if you get caught in a tight space like a tunnel or a hallway or something like that, you don't really want to be uh, fighting off, you know, like packs of enemies with a bow, right? So I'm going to have to, um, you know, develop some kind of uh, melee weapon skill as well. Did you have an unfortunate uh, permanent relocation with that character? No, but... Uh, I did have some difficulty, right? You know, like I was forced to retreat and run around and take evasive action and all that kind of stuff. I couldn't just stand there and defend myself, right? Yep. Especially against strong enemies. It's one of the reasons that I like the war axe, because actually I like uh, war axe and shield. And uh, one of my most successful characters that I ever played, actually, I started off right from the very beginning using the good old uh, steel war axe and a shield, right? And then just kind of worked my way up from there. So you figure you're going to go war axe and shield again, or? Ooh. Ooh. Wow, that thing can jump. Yeah. Well, also, see, time slowed for me there. Yep. Right? That's from your vampire abilities, right? Yes. It's similar to the uh, perk that you can get while blocking, but it's basically built in. If, if as, as a vampire, as you increase in power as well, um, your ability to do that improves so that it happens more and more often, right? Yep. But anyway, I figured I would go this way instead of the way that Delphine normally goes, just because, for one thing, I didn't want to go the same way that she goes. I don't want to go the same way that you go. <laughs> well, because... Your way smells. Because, like I said, she drives me nuts, right? And also, it is possible for her to do something dumb like step in front of you while you're trying to shoot something with your bow, and then the next thing you know, she's mad at you, and then it kind of breaks things, right? Yeah, and then you got to reload the game. It's the same old Bethesda thing where... Friendly fire. Friendly fire can actually break the game. And you know what? If they were going to have... Need something? Friendly fire break the game, they should have just not had friendly fire. Because that happened to us in that New Vegas hope. The episode two, we had to uh, go back and replay a bunch off camera because we accidentally friendly fired a guy and it turned out to be really important and it broke the game. Yep. <laughs> in in <laughs> really horrible ways. Yeah, in really horrible ways, like you can't continue, right? Where'd you come from? So really, as far as I'm concerned... Um, Friendly fire, if it's going to be that bad, 
for the game doesn't belong there, right? You know, there's but lots... it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be that so bad if they had a uh, better yield system. To be honest with you, I feel like the yield system in something like Oblivion worked really well. Because you could actually yield to almost anyone. Yeah. As long as they weren't like a like bandit or something. Well, even then, I think that uh, there are lots of games in this particular genre that uh, don't have friendly fire too, right? And they function perfectly well. And they're quite exciting to play and all that kind of stuff. I think Dragon's Dogma is one that comes to mind, actually. I don't remember if that game has friendly fire. It might. I don't well, think it's consequential, though. Yeah. Well, that's one of those huskies, right? That will sit there and it'll it'll uh, retreat and then it'll sit there and cower and be it, hostile it, at you. But it and, but it stays hostile until you get far enough away from it, I guess, for the contact to be broken. Right? <clears throat> Maybe the husky will become a dragon slayer. There, now we're far enough away that it's you know the contact has been broken. Right. But yeah, that's that's one thing that really, uh, you know, I think they they implemented very badly the uh, friendly fire thing because it obviously never occurred to somebody that uh, allowing that might just break the game, right? <laughs> and you don't want to introduce things into your game that are going to, uh, you know, actually break it to the point where it's not playable. <laughs> Not unless you can break it to make it more playable again. Well, I mean, there should be some sort of failsafe built in so that uh, if you meet an important NPC and he happens to be standing right behind an enemy that you're busy shooting, and the enemy steps out of the way and you accidentally shoot him... Yeah, well, you, you shouldn't be able to break the game in that way. You should be able to break the game in other ways, but not in that way. Yeah. It shouldn't be uh, that easy. Got going on here. Silver hand guys. <laughs> oh, I just fell in the water. I think I have a ring, actually. I can walk on the water. Let's see about that. Do you have a ring of water walking? Uh, yes, I do. I have a ring of water walking. It will reduce my armor slightly, but I can walk on water. Yeah. Especially because these guys are tough. Yeah, you can actually go out into the water and then shoot them. And they can't uh, hit you with their melee weapons. That's right. Oh, he went the other way. Oh, that guy's got a boat. You might want to hide underneath the bridge and heal up. Yeah. We'll take cover here for a moment. At least until my uh, companions have... Uh, killed that guy. Killed that guy. Do a little bit of healing here. Because that's one of the drawbacks, is that the reduced armor will, of course, allow those to do more damage, right? going on here. Somebody just take a power shot at me? Yes. Mm. From up on top of the bridge? <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's a thing. He tried to power shot you from the top of the bridge. Is it just the chief left now? Yeah. Looks like it. Okay, well... We'll, uh, we'll get something that can chase him around a little bit, too. There. Oh, 
I missed. You missed. <laughs> uh oh. Oop. You're stuck in a bug. I'm stuck in a animation, yeah. That happens sometimes, especially when coming in and out of the water. Yeah. Happened in Oblivion, too, actually. We got to see it in the Oblivion playthrough. That's a legacy bug. Yeah. Okay, well, that's it for him now. Everybody else okay now? Guess we should probably uh, remove some projectiles. Yeah, everybody's all pinned cushioned up here. Yep. Including me, I had one sticking out of my face. Okay, well. Owned silver scimitar. There's a third one around here somewhere, too. Where did he go? Isn't he under the bridge? No, he should be over there. See where that ice oh, yeah, spike is? Yep. There he is. These ones aren't the uh, higher level ones yet, though, that have the really good stuff on them. Nope. They were just the normal ones. Yeah. Just the same, though. They're still dangerous enough. Flower picker. Hey, alchemy is important. That is one thing that is also important. Like, uh, with this side character I've been playing through, I actually got my alchemy skill up to the point where I can make uh, healing potions that are stronger than all except for the uh, ultimate ones. Yep. You know, like, I can make healing potions that heal, like, 190 or 200 points of damage, right? Nice. Which really helps because then you don't need to carry, you know, like 65 pounds worth of healing potions. Or if you do, then you've at least got uh, better ones. Better ones, right? You don't have to drink 10 healing potions if you take a serious hit from something. You can only drink, you only need to drink one or two, right? Yep. So yeah, alchemy is important, even if all you do is just make healing potions. <clears throat> Which is why I pick flowers. Because you can't train in everything, right? Ah, oh, you don't need to train in everything. Once you've got your weapon skill mastered and your armor skill mastered, you're pretty much set in this game. Yeah. See, another reason why it's good to have a one-handed melee weapon is because one of the things that I like to do, too, is I like to use the ward spells to protect myself from magical attacks and dragon breath and that kind of thing. Yep. yep. And you can't do that if you're trying to use some kind of two-handed weapon, right? No, you pretty much have to have all the resistance equipment on. Yeah, well, and the thing is, in this game... It's that difficult I have, to accumulate the way, that. The way it's set up, even like that side character I'm playing, I had trouble against any kind of dragon because of the way that uh, dragon damage is boosted. Yep. Like, you take serious damage from them even with your resistances all at 100 or better, right? Yep. Because I'm not sure, but I think resistances also cap out at a certain point. No, you don't want to go up there. A dragon, it's attacking. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Not yet. It's or are you just panicking? <laughs> panicking. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it's doing up there, but I'm not waiting around to find out. Okay. Bye. Oh, there's Delphine. Where are you going? Running in random directions. Yeah, okay, well, you know what? We're going to go this way. I guess you can catch up. 
So even here at Kynes Grove, I still have the uh, the uh, stuff going on, right? Like I put the anvil there and the magic, the magic chest, chest and and uh, you know, like I put a a, a cook pot on this. Like you're on this fire. It's a really right. convenient place to have this stuff too, because it is near a quest line location. Yep. Yeah. Well, there's, there's actually a lot of side quests that can be originated at this location too, right? We've even got a storage chest with some random items in there to start with, and I'm going to go over and stand by the fire for a minute because I'm cold. We'll have to warm up a little bit. Well, perhaps we should pause. Okay. And we're back. Yes. So we will head on up this way and... Uh... Hmm. There's supposed to be a guard around here somewhere. Go. Okay. No food for you. Yeah, I was going to hypnotize a guard here, but I guess I'll just have to drink one of my uh, stale blood potions instead. On the bright side, maybe the guard will help you in the fight. <laughs> Maybe they'll be close enough up here, or something. You never know. Dragons aren't exactly stealthy. Yeah. Oh, look. Even though she was running the wrong way, she somehow managed to find her way up here. zil ursa. Let's watch and wait. This is worse than I thought. I don't know why we're sneaking. He just turned and looked right at me. I wonder if they wrote a total, like a whole dragon language, kind of like the Star Trek guys did with Klingon. I have no idea, maybe. <laughs> Multiple. It's gonna be that sneak attack quest thing. Oh right. Yeah. Okay. Let's just turn that off because that's confusing. Now we're going to get your ward out. To this. Yeah. Oh wow! Look at this. What was that? Who was that? Who did that? Where did he go? Oh, there he is. Looks like Salakanir is a forest dragon. Hey. Okay. okay, well. Is that your little dagger? That's my little dagger, yeah. My little dagger with the big uh, enchantment. Yeah, he is. He's a forest dragon. And that's why, when you're fighting dragons, you want to have a ward, right? Mm -hmm. Because I would have taken that whole um, uh, breath attack on the chin if I hadn't been able to block it with the ward, right? Yep. And now Salakonir saw something shiny, so he's gone over there. Not too sure what he's doing, but... He's having ADD issues. As all so. dragons do. Yeah. Guess we'll summon another raid here. Ritalin is the number one prescribed, uh... <laughs> 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 uh, fuck. Where did he go? Left? Left. Oh, okay, he's like way over there. <laughs> Come back here. Yeah, he doesn't usually leave the area. 
I don't know, pretty well all dragons do. Yeah, now that the music has changed to the uh, generic dragon fight music. Go hit him in the ass for a while. There. See, he's not as powerful as some of the ones that you just randomly encounter later, too, right? Yep. You know, when you start uh, encountering legendary and elder dragons and stuff like that, those things are scary. And super powerful. Now I can't carry anymore because I'm carrying too much stuff. Come and bear my burdens. Yeah. Hey, Lydia. I've got your back. As you command, it would be my pleasure. Okay. Well, carry a whole bunch of this nonsense here. Fifteen wolf pelts. A bunch of dragon bones and scales. You okay. Read, I'll follow. I owe you. I owe you some answers, don't I? Go ahead. Whatever you want to know. Nothing held back. Okay. I'm one of the last members of the Blades. A very long time ago, the Blades <coughs> were dragon slayers, and we served the Dragonborn, the greatest dragon slayer. For the last 200 years since the last Dragonborn Emperor, the Blades have been searching for a purpose. Now that dragons are coming back, our purpose is clear again. Well, Martin couldn't shout, but that was a pretty neat trick turning into a dragon, right? Yep. <laughs> uh, okay, well, you know what? I'm just gonna First thing we cut to the chase the here. Behind the, dragons. the Thalmor are our best lead. They aren't involved, they'll know who is. Okay. Uh, what makes you think Nothing Thalmor are bringing? Yet. But my gut tells me it can't be anybody else. The Empire had captured Ulfric. The war was basically over. Then a dragon attacks, Ulfric escapes, and the war is back on. And now the dragons are attacking everyone. Conspiratorial thinking. Yeah. Skyrim is weakened. The Empire is weakened. Yeah, these guys are fanatics too, right? Yep. Back but the Thalmor. You know, they don't think of uh, dragons as being individuals. If we could get into the That's why I've downloaded that mod called the Parthernax Dilemma. Ah. Uh, because, you know, like, at some point in this storyline, she'll demand that you kill Parthenax, and if you refuse, then you uh, get kicked out of the dragon killing club, right? <laughs> and, uh... Not sure yet. So, with the Parthenax Dilemma, you can actually give her shit and tell her that uh, she's got no right to tell you what to do and that Parthenax is worthy of, uh, you know, treatment as an individual and all that kind of stuff, right? And at least in theory, anyway. I've never actually played it through, but in the mod description it said that, uh, you know, like it'll kind of settle her and, and Esburn down a little bit. Haha. Uh -huh. An ash pile. Oh, okay. A zombie fox. <laughs> That's what that was. Yeah, well, you know, I'm sure it uh, fought against the dragon well. Was, uh, dead fought goal. well and died well. Okay, well, you know what? I am not going to rush to go and uh, do the diplomatic immunity thing. I think I'm going to rush to return the Horn of Jurgen Windcaller. So that I can get the third word of the unrelenting force show. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. And then we can go back to uh, the the storyline with Serana and the Dawn Guard here that we interrupted in order to uh, get to this point. But for obvious reasons, I wanted to, you know, like do a little bit of level building first, just because. In uh, in my game, dragons are so strong, right? Yep. 
and you don't want to have a bunch of randomly encountered dragons attacking you in twos and threes when you're only like level 15. <laughs> hey, where are you guys? Where did they go? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm gonna take all this stuff off of you now, Lydia. As you command, my thane. Yeah. Sworn to carry my burdens until I decide that you don't need to anymore. Anything else? Uh, well, you don't really need that. Okay. Because now we can go and dump this stuff off in the chest here. In the cloud storage chest. else I can get rid of here. Maybe some more potions. Yeah. You have like 50 million vials of poison that you never use. Yeah, I know. Well, I've got two paralysis plus these uh, spider venom things. Right. But I always forget to use them. Look at all the fucking alchemy crap you got. Just from coming here. <laughs> hey, it adds up. That's why you pick flowers. Right? God. Because before you know it... Okay, I gotta put my... Uh, armored ring back on now too silver ring there. okay uh, what time is it it's 535 a.m. So I guess we can start traveling toward the the uh, road of the world and uh... oh there's a guard wondered where they all went yeah I guess they all died yeah That would explain why they're not walking about. Yeah. See, this is from uh, Immersive Weapons. Yep. Unfortunately, there's no uh, custom animations for them. Right? It would be nice if uh, this game had included some spears and spear animations. Would have been. But I guess they were just lazy. Yeah. I don't know, I never really played Morrowind. Did they have spear animations in Morrowind? I know they had spears. You'd have to ask somebody who actually played Morrowind. Who's oh. Who's there? Oh. That's who. Oh, Shall it's daytime. It? Yep, it's daytime. Maybe I'll just loot these two guys and then we'll find some place to put the tent up. Oh, there's another zombie fox. This looks like a good place to set up camp. Yeah, relatively flat over here. Yeah. No, the zombie fox cannot come inside the tent. But he wants to. Yeah, I can't imagine a fox would make a very good pet anyways. No, probably not. They're probably meaner than crap. Well, they are wild animals. I mean, really.
I don't know though. I mean, if you had one raised from uh, like in captivity, maybe it wouldn't be very different than a dog. Maybe. Uh, the thing about wild animals is that they, instead of having uh, like several weeks to tame them and build up trust with them, you have like days from the time that they're born. Oh. Like the time period to actually uh, get them uh, in captivity and, and not have them be so wild is much shorter. Oh, I wouldn't know. And even then, like, uh, for example, people domesticate wolves all the time. And, uh, th the way that those animals behave is still going to be at the extreme as what you might expect of a domesticated counterpart. And so they can be quite a handful to look after. Yeah. Well, there's another dead goblin. Oh. What's going on here? Mammoths and rhinos. Working together against a common enemy that will probably be dead shortly. Poor wolf. Okay, well, maybe maybe the werewolf won't be dead shortly. Hmm. See, werewolves, werewolves are tough, man. Werewolves are tough. Like, look at that. That one werewolf just put the run on those two big animals, right? Oh, there goes the giant, though. Okay. Well, you know what? This, this looks, looks like, like it's well in hand. Except now every wolf in Skyrim wants to kick your ass. Well, and bears, too. I didn't realize bears could leap so. Yeah, well, the uh, slow time thing does kind of tend to uh, distort that kind of thing a little bit, too. Yeah. Because that's some sort of power attack, I guess, that it was attempting, and I was able to dodge it, right? That's right, yep. Yeah, I think certain kinds of wildlife only have power attacks. Yeah. Okay, well, we're just going to keep on going this way. I'm trusting that the giant and his uh, livestock will probably uh, take care of that werewolf. We won't need to worry about it too much. Her, oh, see, there's a dragon flying around over there. I don't know if he'll uh, come close enough to bother me or not, but... Oh, I guess we've had a look at this fellow before, but the chest respawns, like the contents of the chest respawn. Like some other areas in another game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can loot it over and over. Some stuff in there this time. And that healing potion also respawns. I hear another bear somewhere. Oh, it's up there. What's going on? There's something else coming up behind us. Dragon? Doesn't seem to be the dragon. It seems to be something else. But there is a dragon. Oh, I think I just saw an ice spike go by. Oh no. Okay, it's that troll. the bear. Hmm. 
All I can say is, goddamn, are bears ever hostile in uh, the Elder Scrolls world? Yeah. Yep, those bears, they all want to kick your ass. I just think it's funny, because I remember seeing this uh, video once of, uh, there was this guy, and he, he was, like, out camping in the middle of nowhere, and, uh, he had his lawn chair set up by the river. And he's just sitting there in his lawn chair, having a beer. And then this bear walks up, right beside his lawn chair, like, you could reach out and touch it. Yeah. And it just lays down there. <laughs> Why? Did he have, like, uh, some food or something? I mean, maybe he did. I didn't see the whole shot of his camp there. But the bear just laid there, and the guy just stood there, like, real still. And the bear was there, man. It was yeah. funny. Just wanted to come chill, I guess. I guess so. Hey. Oh, there's something else there now. Oh, oh, these things are tough. He just took an ice spike to the mouth. Yeah. See, I have that perk now, that archery perk. You see how slow he's moving? Yep. Yeah, the I more guess. you pincushion him, the slower he moves. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, we'll remove some more projectiles here because I don't really need to walk around with an ice spike sticking through my head. And we'll, uh, we'll change that again. So these guys carry dragon bones like crazy. It's killing one of these things. It's just like killing a dragon, right? Yep. So I guess I might have to uh, find somebody who can train me in smithing so that I can start working on that. Uh oh. Man, you're finding all of the uh, uh, immersive creatures enemies now. Yep. Well, it looks like uh, one blow from the Minotaur Club there took out Lydia. Yep. Oh yeah, they're dangerous, that's for sure. Okay, now... Now you're carrying too much to run. Do let me know if I can be of service. Yeah, let's do a quick uh, exchange of materials here. A quick exchange of carry my shit. Yeah. Okay, that'll probably do. You lead, I'll follow. Yeah, she got messed up pretty good. I got an ice spike sticking out of me again. Jeez. It's just part of the hazard of traveling with a companion like Serana. Yeah. It's no wonder Lydia gets mad and beats the crap out of her every now and then. Where'd you come from? Oh, wolves. Oh, is that another min- oh, wow. <laughs> This is the road of the Minotaur Lord. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, because they're kind of rare, too. Yeah, yeah, you don't usually see two of them in such quick succession, right? I haven't even had time to show the perk that I have, right? Yet. Okay. Well, I guess we'll remove projectiles again so I don't have to walk around with an ice spike sticking out of me. Again. <clears throat> so anyway, the perk that I have under uh, archery, because I have actually spent quite a few perks in the archery tree here, is called Crippling Shot. And each shot within 25 feet slows a target by 10 percent nice and it stacks right and lasts for 20 seconds so so long as i can keep repeatedly hitting that target i can basically slow it to the point where it almost can't even move yep and then i can keep it that way like 
That's how, remember I told you that one time with a character I was playing, I had just a basic wooden longbow? Yep. But I had that perk, and I killed a werewolf with it? Well, I don't know why you think you need a, a melee weapon then. Well, because uh, the bow in really, really close quarters, like out here even in this on this road, I have room to move around and jump and dodge and that kind of thing. Whereas if you're in like a, a dungeon hallway or a cave or something like that, uh, where there's, you know, not very much room to maneuver, well, you know, that's my style, right? Because I want to be able to move around. But sometimes you just can't, so you need to uh, develop another alternative for those situations because uh, my my fighting style with the bow doesn't lend itself very well to uh, areas where you don't have the freedom of movement, right? Hey, bows are a melee weapon. Well, sort just, of. You just need to carry all the liquor in Skyrim on you. Yeah. Yeah, but the problem is, though, the bash, while it is better with this ordinator perk tree mod, it is better than... Uh... Ooh, that's a big one. Oh, no, it's not. It's just a regular one. Yeah. Usually you encounter the big ones on the road. Yeah. Well, I'm not really too worried about poison anyway, because I have a very high degree of poison resistance. Yeah, from being a vampire. But, uh, still, the amount of damage that a tundra spider does is concerning, right? Thankfully, that was just the regular frostbite kind. Yeah, like, I think I'm beyond the point where I need to worry about being one-shotted by one of them now. But I know up to as much as, like, level 20, uh, a level 20 character can be one-shotted by one of those tundra spiders, right? Yeah, they're serious business. Yeah. Yeah, they do a huge amount of damage. Boy, you know what? I just about can't go 10 feet without having to kill something here. <laughs> You're the road clearing crew. <laughs> yeah. Here's a feeding opportunity. I'm on my way to and you have to do this in first person because if you try to aim the vampire seduction in third person, you always miss. It doesn't matter how close to the target you're standing, you will miss in, if you aim it in third person. Probably the closer why. you are, the more likely you are to miss. I don't know why that is. Probably has to do with the way projectiles spawn into the game. Maybe, I don't know. Pretty weird, anyway. Oh yeah, there was something else I was going to play around with today, too, if I get a chance. Uh, where is it now? Oh, I'm looking in the wrong place. We might try that out a little later if I uh, get a chance to. Okay. Skuma salesman out there in the middle of nowhere. Speaking of which, it's been quite a while since we've... Uh, had some Zuma? Since we've done some drugs. Hey. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is very bright. Yeah, that's what hashish does, right? Oh, 
Are you going to be able to see the bear? Possibly not. Okay, well, that's... That's a sign on a that's road. That's a signpost, yeah. You're not going to read what that sign says. Oh, that's okay, though. I know where I am. As I walk off the edge of a cliff or something, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you're still trying to pick flowers at this rate, too. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. That is so bright. <laughs> yeah, I've never actually done hashish before. Oh. There. Well, I can see it being useful if this was a pitch black area. Yeah, well, actually, when I first started uh, using Cannabis Skyrim, I was also running the Darker Nights mod. But uh, now you're not for the sake of recording. Yeah, exactly. For, for the purposes of recording, Darker Nights is just too dark, right? So I still have it installed. I just have it uh, disabled while we're doing this uh, playthrough, right? There's something up there. Fire an arrow in the general yeah, direction. We'll, we'll aim, aim at, at the, the red, red dot. dot. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, I just got ice spiked by... Uh... Yeah. As one does. Oh, there it is. See if they're close enough. There. That'll do it. Yeah, and then they just kind of disappear as they get further. Yeah, well, I can see a little bit of movement there. Okay, see there's the waterfall and the bridge. Who's there? Oh, these things now, huh? Yep. Those well ones. Yeah. Just okay. a two. I'm not going to get any of my arrows back. Oh, we got a couple of my arrows back there. Wow, this lasts for a really long time, too. Indeed. I guess it's potent stuff. Yeah. Well, on the bright side, I don't have to watch you flower pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although you're still trying. <laughs> yeah, wow, I almost need a white cane for this. What, are, what do you think my chances of being able to find the mountain pass path is going to be? Well, I'm not sure if you'll even make it there in this episode with the number of things you've had to kill so far. Yeah. Is this the marker rock? Could be. Yep, I think it is. Okay. You're like, what's this vague shape that I see? It looks like the, the path, at least, is outlined in white. <laughs> follow the glowing white road. Follow the glowing white road, yeah. <laughs> the milk-colored road. I wonder if it comes with frosted flakes. Yeah. 
I love Frosted Flakes. I like Frosted Flakes too. They just don't like me very much. Uh, I just wish they sold Frosted Cheerios here. Yeah. I miss Frosted Cheerios. Yeah, they used to sell Frosted Cheerios. That was my favorite cereal, was well, see, Frosted Cheerios. The thing that's such a bizarre contradiction is that supposedly they stopped selling Frosted Cheerios because they were unhealthy, right? Yep. But you could buy Captain Crunch or Fruit Loops, Fruit Loops or Sugar Crisps or Frosted Flakes. Like how are how are those any more healthy? Healthy. Okay, I think we need to try and find the can't find the path to continue going up the hill here. Go to the right. I think you're going the wrong way now. Yeah, well, oh, maybe not. Oh, maybe, maybe not. Okay here. You know, like, that's, that's, that's just, just a bizarre contradiction. You know, it seems to me more like uh, um, the people that make Cheerios are being discriminated yes. against or something. <laughs> <laughs> because... I'd, you know, if, if from a nutrition point of view, I'd sure much rather eat Frosted Cheerios than Captain Crunch. Uh-oh, this looks like bad news. Yeah, that's, uh, werewolves. Yeah, and I can't see very well. Yeah, this is kind of the wrong time to be stoned. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh... Uh oh. Yeah, you can't even tell which blob, dark blue blob, is friend and which dark blue blob is foe. Yeah. This is bad. Well, we had to try it once, but I think probably I won't do it again. At least not outdoors. Yeah, because this is just. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe too I'll oversaturated. Just, yeah, maybe I'll just do this. Yeah, there you go. That's something that you can do. <clears throat> oh, I think that the indicators are coming up, though. This is going to wear off before too long, right? Yep. You see on the right edge of the screen there? Yep. So it looks like in a minute or two, uh, my uh, sight will return to normal. Did my um, wraith get killed? I think so. Yeah. We'll put another one out there. Well, it looks like we're winning. <laughs> I think. Well, he just he just bought it again. Oh, there's one over there somewhere. Must be one over there too. Wow, this is terrible. It's like being blind. Because <laughs> it is like being blind. Yeah. Oh, did my uh, Wraith get killed? Nope, he's still out there. Okay. I mean, keep in mind these werewolves are so tanky too that... Uh... Yeah. Okay, well, I guess now we'll put another one out there. <sighs> yeah, you shoot that blob. Hey, there's a bunch of extra red dots on the screen now. Something else must have showed up, too. Well, you know how it is. Everything in Skyrim wants to kick your ass. Yeah, especially when you're stoned. My, okay, he, he's still there. You have to reach out and feel for him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Getting close. Okay, uh... We'll be able to see again soon.
Okay. Well, lesson, lesson learned. learned. Yeah, hashish is for indoors. Oh, ha! There. Obviously, I even though I was in my my uh, state, I still managed to find a uh, place to go and hide where they couldn't get me. Somehow. Okay, that takes care of that one. Hey, look, a canister. Root. I have, have no idea what happened to your friends. Well, they're probably all uh, knocked down and knocked, knocked out. Knocked down and knocked out right now. Oh, well, Serana just woke up. I think getting knocked down the cliff does more damage than getting hit by the werewolf. Probably. Oh, but now I can... Well, one vial of poison lasts for four shots or stabs. That'd be good for paralysis poison. Yeah. Poisons pretty much don't work on werewolves, though. That's why I don't bother with it, right? Okay, I think we're down to one left now. I can't believe in the state I was in that I managed to find my way up this path this far. Who's there? I think it's more good luck than good planning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're actually going to run out of silver arrows. Oh, yeah. No, you got one left. There. And then I got some of them back. And since I can't make those, you have to actually be pay attention and uh, you know only use the shoot the silver arrows to shoot things that you need to shoot with silver arrows, right? Got one back from him too. Oh, okay, that's what the the uh, fourth thought was. Okay, well, that was exciting. Note to self, though, we need to avoid uh, taking hashish. Outdoors. Outdoors. <laughs> because the effects are extraordinarily strong and they last for a really long time. I need to recharge my bow again here, too. Yep. Well, thankfully, you've got a million soul gems on you. Yeah. Look Have at you that. even I... expended the last of your lesser soul gems yet? I don't like, think so. I don't so, think no. you're even close. No, I don't think so. Okay, looks like these guys haven't. Now that I have access to dragon bones, <clears throat> maybe I could make a bow called Eclipse. Oh, okay. Which is similar in power to this one, but it has... Yes. 
a much higher fire rate. Mm. What do you do here in Iverstead? We're kin, so I won't kill you, but you need to mind your own business. Leave Iverstead and lead me to my own affairs. What do you know about a vampire city? I don't know you, and I don't trust you. I have things I need to do. Scores that must be settled. Leave me be. Forget all you've heard. Uh. <clears throat> okay, so if I followed this guy, he would lead me to uh, Cold Haven, which is the vampire city. Except that he's going the wrong way right now. Oh, there. Now he's now he's heading off in that direction. So I could follow him. I don't need to because I already know where it is. And I've got other things to do right now. Like returning the horn. Like returning the horn to the Greybeards. So that I can learn how to shout and uh, knock people off cliffs and things like that. done that in a while we'll do that just in case yeah well you never know when you might get a game crash Bethesda and all yeah although things have been going reasonably well so far today I got that ready to go already. Stop that. Now I wonder if uh, I'm going to have to kill something every... 50 feet on my way up here like before or if it's going to be quiet if you've you, you're wondering if you've purged the area yeah see there is a stark contrast between the fallout games and the uh, elder scrolls games in the a population of enemies on the roads yeah <laughs> well the thing is though what i noticed in this game at least is that you can have randomly generated encounters almost anywhere whereas in fallout 4 they made rather heavy use of what i call the encounter hotspot yep so encounters only happen at certain points on the map certain right? fixed locations yeah certain fixed locations yeah and i guess that's okay but uh it still is a little bit lazy you know whereas here you know, like you could have uh, encounters anywhere. At least as far as I can tell. Unless they have like uh, uh, the fixed points but very, very densely placed. Mm -hmm. So that it appears like random encounters can happen anywhere. I don't know. It's one or the other. It kind of makes me wonder why, even though they're different games... There are also there are enough similarities between them that it makes me wonder why they didn't take some of the things that worked in this game and apply them to that one. You know, it's hard to say too, right? Because the, the thing is too, is the games often get developed uh, separate from each other. Oh yeah, I mean, these Even ones are Even though they use the same people. engine. Yeah, these ones are several years apart, right? So it probably wasn't even the same group of people working on them. Well, it also makes you think too that sometimes... Uh, Patches and fixes may apply to one version of the engine that don't apply to the other. And it takes years uh, to merge it all together again, right? Well, there's Lydia. I guess uh, Serana's still hung up on that corner back there. Was that that troll again? Yep. Yeah, he respawns.
So I stop and have a look at these things all, all on the way up here again, just to have a little holiday from bears and wolves for a little while. <laughs> Because it gets to be a chore sometimes, especially when you travel the way I do, where I don't use fast travel a lot. Yeah, well, as we can see from uh, this episode... You know, like, you you basically have to uh, draw your weapon and fight, like, every 50 yards, right? Yep. <clears throat> yeah, you, you, you can see them marching across uh, uh, the wilds in formation, right? Yeah, well, it, it makes this mental image where uh, they're all sitting in this big, huge, uh, um, you know, like auditorium or something and they have a big screen lit up on of the map of Skyrim on the wall with a with a blinking dot where I'm located right yep and it's like okay everybody that's where uh uh Sandman 99's character is right now go get him <laughs> or you look up and there's a drone flying over top or something keeping track yep, of where yep, you are there right? you go <laughs> It just looks like a bird. Yeah, maybe that's what those weird cliff racer things are, right? Those sort of pterodactyl yep, looking yep. things that just fly around but don't really otherwise do much of anything. Okay, we are here. Yeah, did I not feed on Erengar yet? Have a look here. Nope, I didn't. Okay. Let's go see if Erengar is sleeping. Or alone. Or alone. Not sleeping. I'm not sure whether uh Gnosis yeah, okay, well he's not alone either. What do you say? Come and ah. day run battle. You've retrieved the horn of Jorgen I have. Well what time is it? It's six AM, so he's not likely going to be sleeping time. anytime soon. Come oh. with me. It is time for us to recognize you formally as Dragonborn. Okay. Let's go. Yeah, see, I I have a special feeding victim, um, Delphine, which gives me fifteen percent resistance to dragon attacks. And even and, then, and the, uh, the special feeding victim, uh, Maven Blackbriar, which gives me a plus ten to my speech skill. I am your sword and your shield. And my pack mule. Especially your pack mule. Yeah. You are ready to learn the final word of unrelenting force. Da. Which means push. Da. Did he say dur? Yep, yeah, fus ro dur. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's chat. I can't move. I guess you're between them enough. I guess I'm between them enough. Yeah. 
Oh, now I can move. Dova King, you have tasted the voice of the Greybeards. I have. Passed through unscathed. High Hrothgar is open to you. Okay. Why were you shouting at me? Words of greeting to a dragonborn who has accepted oh, somehow the uh, subtitles have turned the themselves off again. The <laughs> young Talos when he came to High Hrothgar before he became the Emperor Tiber Septim. Yeah. Okay, we got a simple hot cloth headband. This is part of the way of the monk, I think. Oh, okay. The, the headband. What did you ah, actually say? I sometimes forget you are not Same thing with that meditation cube that Balgruf gave me. This is a rough that gives me, if I meditate, I can cure disease. Has the yep. Storm crown languished, with no worthy brow to sit upon. By our breath, we bestow it now to you, in the name of Kind, in the name of Shore, and in the name of Atmora of old. You okay. are Ismir now, the dragon of the north. Hearken to it. Okay. I'd like to learn more You've about the voice. So much already, Dragonborn. Growing your gift too quickly would be dangerous. But there are many words of power in Skyrim carved in the dragon tongue. Even from here, we can feel the thoom resonate from them. Finding these lost words would be a sufficient test to temper your abilities with experience. Ask when you are ready to search. Okay. I'm, I'm ready, ready to search. I'm ready, ready to search. Give me your map and I will show you where its echo can be found. Ooh, Highgate Ruins. That's a bad one. Well, I guess you're just going to have to prove that you can do it. Yeah, remember when I was playing with my side character earlier? And uh, that NPC I was with who promptly got killed. Yep. Remember that? That was like, what, what was that earlier today? And uh, that's where the Highgate ruins were. Anyway, we're going to go into the High Hrothgar library. We're going to turn our subtitles back on first, though. There. Stupid Bethesda bugs. Anyway, we're going to go into the High Hrothgar Library, which has been opened up by uh, the, when, when Arngir said High Hrothgar is open to me. Well, he meant that. Oops, I don't want that plate. Don't you want to eat those bear claws on that plate? No, I just wanted the bear claws. I didn't want the plate. Can we, can we ask why the fuck bear claws are just sitting on a plate? Uh, they're there so that I can pick them up and do alchemy stuff with them later. Like, who here has, a, has like, a hankering for bear claws in the middle of the night? You know, you, you, you study the way of the voice, like, 18 hours a day, and then you go back to the library and eat some bear claws? Yeah, well, we'll just drop the plate. And there's a book. The Five Songs of King Wolfharth. <laughs> okay, and in here... There is a bed to sleep in. I can take that potion. And here, if I wanted to, I could pick up what's called the Amulet of Mantras. This is all part of uh, the um, Thunder Child, Dragon Thunder Child, I think it's called. It's an expansion of the uh, Dragonborn abilities, including extra shouts and that kind of thing. Okay. And I'm running a mod that allows me to uh, shorten the cooldown in between shouts already. But if I wasn't, then you could actually use this amulet to program up to 10 shouts, right? So long as you're wearing this amulet. Yep. But I never really did figure out how to make it work correctly, you know? Um... And it also takes up a space that you can use to, you know, like have a some sort of a resistance enchantment or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. And then in here is just another big empty room, and in all of these wardrobes are various... Oh, okay. <laughs> the ancient tongues often gag themselves. Hmm. Okay, various uh, robes and hoods and all that kind of stuff, right? 
So if you want to walk around looking like the Greybeards in a big, loose, flowing robe and, and a hood... With a gag. You could. Yeah, and you could also have put in a, a gag, I guess. Well, maybe the Greybeards are into some extracurricular activities. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. uh, so anyway, there are several wardrobes or cupboards full of different types, like different colors and all that kind of stuff. Yep. So you don't just have the standard gray like the gray beards. You can get red or orange or purple or green whatever the hell or whatever the hell you want, right? <clears throat> and uh, there's lots of. Uh, different ones there they really isn't anything special about them I, I would guess that you could probably enchant them if you wanted to yeah and they and they do have a warmth rating so uh you know like the survival mode uh warmth system recognizes them you know as robes and boots and that kind of thing right yep yep but anyway here is something interesting so in this book it gives you uh, descriptions of some new shouts. Okay. And there are quite a few of them. So I'm not going to get into all of it here, and I'm just going to leave the book there. You could take the book, and then when you come back the next time, well, a new book will have spawned there anyway. But here, what you have to do is you uh, use the meditation map and what will happen is your stamina bar will start to creep downward mm -hmm. and then it will disappear and you have to stop meditating when your stamina reaches less than 10 percent but you have to like sort of mentally count like i usually count like one one thousand two one thousand and so on just to try and make a guess as to when i can stop meditating right okay so we're gonna try this so here we go uh We'll use the meditation map. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008, 1,009, 1,010, 1,011, 1,012, 1,013, 1,014, 1,015, 1,016, 1,017, 1,018, 1,019, 1,020, 1,021, 1,022. Okay, we'll stop there. Oh, okay, that was a bit too long. So we'll try it at about uh, 20, right? Because 22 was too long. Yep. <clears throat> so we'll have to wait for my stamina bar to refill itself again. And then you can give it another go. And then I can give it another try here. So 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008, 1,009, 1,000. 1011, 1012, 1013, 1014, 15, 1016, 1017, 1018, 1019, 1020, 1021. Oh, there. See, now I was a bit early. Yeah, well, you were counting a little bit faster. Yeah, well, it's, it's hard, though, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's I'm not a watch, so I can't. You know, I suppose if we had a stopwatch, we could probably do it that way. <laughs> Have you got a stopwatch, stopwatch on yeah, that phone? I do. Really? I do. Okay. Well then, uh... Shall we see? Okay. Um, I'm gonna press, press the, the thing, thing and you can start it. Okay. Okay. Tell me when about 22 seconds are up. Okay, we'll stop there. There. There you go. See, and now watch what's going to happen. Kine is pleased with our actions, and new insights in the voice reveal themselves. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now we have certain uh, tasks that we can do, right? Yep. Uh, and that's just listing them for us. I think it also makes a list in one of the menus so that we can refer to them. Uh, these are things that we can do to gain uh, uh, dragon, the equivalent of dragon souls. Uh, okay. 
by doing these certain things and I don't think it's like a one for one thing but we also get a bunch of new shouts based on some shouts that we already know and they have different effects right they're variants of uh, the existing shouts yep And of course, I don't really know what they all do. I would have to read, and, and even I, even though I did read that book, I mean, there's so many of them that I can't remember what they all do anyway, right? Yeah. But anyways, eventually, when we're out in the world and we're doing stuff to please kind and all that kind of thing, uh, eventually, if we uh, gain enough uh, points, I guess, from doing things, you know, like that we're the, in the list that we're supposed to be doing. Yep. Um, I think it's under listed under quests. Yeah, Champion of Kind. So there you go. Donate gold to Iron Gear to support the monastery. Shout to the heavens once a day. Hunt. Every now and then you'll see an animal that's glowing green. Yep. And if you kill that animal, well, then you get points for that. Um, each time that you touch all 10 of the plaques on the way up, you get a, you know, like you get points for that. Uh, as well as other things, right? And uh, once these things have accumulated enough, then you'll get a little message telling you that you can come back here to meditate and uh, learn more stuff, right? Nice. And of course, you have to learn more shouts as well because each of these new shouts that I just learned are all variants. Okay, I guess I can activate that one now too are all variants of shouts that I already knew, right? Yep. So this one here, though, is one of the ones that the uh, magma dragons use, you know, where you get pounded by meteors falling out of the sky kind of thing. Yeah, yep. Yeah, well, I can do that now too, right? Nice. And I'm not sure what this one does, but I might try it anyway just to see what it does. All right. I guess I could look in the book and see what it does. I don't know. Probably. Let's see here. Uh, if we can find it in here. Uh... <laughs> See, there's quite a few uh, different shouts in here, right? Yeah, most of these you don't even have yet. Oh, no. There's, like, lots and lots of them, right? Eventually, you could... Uh... Well, you might have to uh, check it out <laughs> next time. Yeah. Okay, so Snowstorm... I'm just trying to find that one in here. It looks like there's like 50 pages. Yeah. But anyway, there'll be a description of it in this book. Yeah. Right. So if I take this book. You can figure uh, it out later. Yeah. Oh, look, see, there's a little bird flying around in here. That's how they know where you are. Yeah. It's the little birds. They're not actually birds. They're drones, right? Okay, so how are we doing for time here, anyway? We are just about an hour 50. Ooh, wow, so this went really long. It did. Okay, well, you know what? We'll uh, stop here, we'll have a little sleep in the bed, and then we'll be on our way. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to go back to, um, you know, doing the stuff with Serana again. Okay. Right? Because we kind of interrupted that just so that we could come back and get this, uh, you know, way of the voice thing on the road. Yep. And now that we've gotten started with that, we can go back. Sounds like a plan. So I, I guess, guess next, next time, time, that's what we'll be doing. All right. Until then. I'm Rec V5. I am Sandman 99. Have a good one.